Hey everyone! So for today's video, we'll talk about the skeletal system of a chicken. But before we proceed to that, let me first show you the preparations on how this chicken ended up like this. First, I asked my uncle to catch this chicken from our backyard. Then, my grandmother helped me to kill it and pluck out its feathers after boiling it. The next step was deboning, which I did myself. I even used some tools from my dissecting kit to help me remove meat easier. Unfortunately, there were still some meat that were very hard to remove. That's why I decided to leave the rest up to the ants. That's all for the preparations. Now let's move on to the real deal. As we all know, skeletal system for both human and other organisms provide a strong framework for support and protection of the body. So now, let's identify the bones of this chicken one by one. Supraoccipital. So, supraoccipital is this bump. It's very visible, especially from this view. Exocipital bones are this one and this one. Parieta can be found here. Frontal, from the name itself, is located in front. Sucamosa, here at the sides. Quadrate possesses a two so-called arms. So this and this are called arms. And quadrate can be found on either side of the skull adjacent to the tympanic cavity. The bone connected at the base of the quadrate is known as a quadrato jugal. Continuous to it is the jugal. So from the name of quadrato jugal, it is obvious that it connects the quadrate to the jugal. Mesethmoid is the bony division in between the orbits. Lacrimal bone is the continuation of the lateral orbital margin. It is located right in front of the orbits. The nasal, it sits on the either side of the nasal process of premaxilla. Here and here. Nasal process of premaxilla. It is the point of attachment of premaxilla to the skull. This is the premaxilla here. Palatine are the thin V shaped bones in the middle. Pterygoid can be found next to the quadrate. So here, the bone here is the pterygoid. Basi occipita can be found under the occipital condyle here, while basi temporal is at the sides. Occipital condyle, small bump here at the back where the first cervical vertebra or the atlas is connected. Foramen magnum is a passage to the central nervous system through the skull connecting the brain with the spinal cord. For the lower jaw, we got three parts, the dentary, the angular, the small one right here, and the supraangular, which is longer and facing upward compared to the angular. The sternum, also known as the breastbone or keel, has a surface area large enough to allow for the attachment of the main flight muscles. At last, is a small and ring-like structure with a deep cavity for articulation. Axis is a short and projects from the cranial end and it passes through the atlas. Axis is the joint that allows the head to turn on the neck. Now, cervical vertebrae consists of 13 vertebrae. To locate that, let's start counting from the atlas. So atlas, one, axis two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three. Now let's proceed to thoracic vertebrae. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This seven vertebrae are the thoracic vertebrae. They are the chest bones. Next is the sensacrum. It is a fusion of vertebrae. Some thoracic, 
some sacral, lumbar, and caudal that provides stability for walking and flying. Next is the pigostyle. Pigostyle, it is visible at the posterior end of a bird. It functions for supporting tail feathers. First is the scapula. Scapula are narrow, thin, and slightly curved bones. Tricoracoid is the strongest bone of the shoulder girdle. Acrocoracoid process is the head of the coracoid. So this is the coracoid. And here, the head is called acrocoracoid process. Glenoid fossa, it is where the head of the humerus fits, right here. If we're going to look at this side, this is the humerus and it is attached to the glenoid fossa or also known as glenoid cavity. Next are the clavicles. Clavicles are also known as the collarbone. They are thin, rod-like, and slightly bent. Next is the interclavicle. So from the word itself, it is where the clavicles intersect or meet. The bones clavicles plus the interclavicle form the bone called furcula. Furcula is commonly known as the wish bone. Furcula is capable of acting like a spring and can provide a firm base of support for the wings. The humerus, which is a large long bone with an ovoid head for articulation. Ulna, which is thick and long. And the rachis, which is lateral to the ulna. Metacarpus is this bone. So for the few spalanches we got here, this one. And two. And since I don't have it in that part, let's go this side. And in total, we have three fused palaces. One, two, and on the upper side, three. For more is the upper leg bone which is located in the thigh of the chicken. Tibia is the major lower leg bone, which is located in the drumstick of the chicken. While the fibula is the very small bone attached to the tibia, right next to tibia. This is the tibia, the thicker one, while fibula is this very thin bone at the very side. Next is tarso metatarsus. So this is the tarso metatarsus. These are the phalanges. Thallium is this bones. The last part of the thoracic vertebrae. It is attached onto the ilium and some of the lumbar and the sacral. They are all attached onto the ilium. This provides strength and rigidity. Next is the ischium, which is much smaller and continuous with the ilium. Pubis is a narrow bone that runs along the border of the ischium. Acetabulum is a deep bone cavity into which the head of a morph fits. Iliac foramen is located between the ilium and the ischium. So here is the iliac foramen. Obturator foramen is the small hole in the pubis. This, this is the pubis. This is the obturator foramen. The pineal process are the small bones pointing outwards aligned with the pubes. So right here and here. 